With the glorious 12th nearly upon us, today we're going to be standing, talking, and indeed shooting from the grouse butt. Welcome back to Targets. <laughs> So we're down here in the grouse butts at Hown Hall shooting. Um, we've got three grouse butts right down the bottom of the school in our big expanse clearing, um, the perfect location to replicate this fast, exciting target. Now, ours are built from timber. Uh, this is a material that was obtained off of the estate. So we've kept it nice and sustainable. And actually, historically, when you see these things built from stone or timber or moorland or highland, it would have been just that. Stuff from the local quarry, you know, from the local forestry department, and that would have been bought in. And then these things are put together, you know, by the ground workers and keepers of the day. Um, the term butt, uh, I assumed it was like a shortening of buttress because they're actually in effect holding the ground or they're built into the ground they're holding back some of them do protrude above ground so that sort of floors my idea and actually I looked into it and the term but is an Anglo-Saxon term for strike um, so I'm going to assume that you know it's been pulled from that because in effect irrespective of location stone or timber the person's in there ready to strike the quarry um, you know and connect connect with said bird. Why do we have them? Well, moorlands, highlands, undulating large expanses of ground, usually covered in that beautiful pinky purple hue of the heather. Um, you know, lovely landscape, undulating sort of topography. The birds coming out in their coveys and their groups, very sharp, very skittish, low flying. You're stood up on top, they're going to disappear, like most birds. You wouldn't stand out in the middle of a field shooting pigeons. I suppose it's different, of course, for partridge and pheasant. But this is more the sort of stealth hunter type of, you know, mindset. So you need to be in, you need to be low and you need to be best covered. So when those birds are pushed forward and they're in flight, you can pick your moment up on and, you know, and away. Um, on most moors you will obviously see a line of butts, eight, nine, um, people shooting all at the same time. Uh, safety is always paramount when shooting shotguns, we know that, you know, it doesn't matter what you're doing, a clay shoot, pigeon, game, safety is generic and non-negotiable. But in a grouse butt, even just a little bit more sharper is required. Um, and there's a few little nuances to um, relating. Um, I'm going to spin round, Jack's going to move the camera, and we're just going to run through a few of those details specific to this style of shooting. Safety in a grouse butt. I'm going to cross over here now, uh, and I'm going to sort of just overlay, you know, the real thing and us here with our simulated version. Um, let's start from the top. Uh, we haven't got any beaters in front of us, okay? We've got traps hidden, so there's nobody out there. So that ticks one thing off. Uh, out on the moor, uh, you're gonna have beaters set way, way back, pushing those birds forward. It's quite a strange psychology actually shooting out, knowing that there's people beyond your shot but there's the clue they are way beyond the uh, the length of your shot um, and actually in the real thing when they get to a certain distance a horn would be blown and you would then only take your shots behind the butt um, I'm just going to touch on it this is not a grouse shooting lesson um, this is sort of an overview of simulated so I'll try not to go too far into any one angle. Um, back here in the simulated setup, in said butt, we've got butts either side. So this and like the real thing. Now, the first thing that can go wrong, bit excited, birds are quite fast or targets are quite fast. You know, 
it's totally acceptable. Whoa! Big old swings and fast movements with the gun. So we need to put up our stops. Now these here are permanently fixed um, because we know with the butts either side and how people shoot, these are over exaggerated. So regardless of what butt you're in, you are not gonna swing your gun to the neighboring butt, okay? So that's these things here, stops. Uh, out on the real, real moor, out on the, the, the sort of proper shooting, you'll see people pulling them out of what look like sort of fishing rod bags and they sort of open out and fold up and they can adjust them accordingly because, you know, here's quite flat and symmetrical. Out in the real thing, it's a bit more undulating and, you know, much more rustic. But anyway, gun stops. And just to put that into some perspective for you, you'll see the gun's safe. This is so when people are shooting and that bird comes out, they can't swing round and shoot the neighbouring butt and ditto that way, okay? Um, coming back from that, there's the generics. We're definitely going to have a hat on when we're shooting this. More so here for bits of broken clay. Um, the targets are quick. The idea, like with the real thing, is to get on the bird early, do what you've got to do, take the shot. It's the same here. When those targets come out, they don't look like they're doing much until they get really close, then they whiz past. So it can be quite deceiving. Some of those shots then can be late. So it's imperative not only to have a hat on, but also to be wearing glasses. Now out on the real moor, that would also be a protection just in case for that bit of stray shot that's flying. Okay, so, but we know all that, that's generic. Hat and glasses and the earmuffs. The other thing unique to here because of how we've set the targets and we want to best replicate. Um, this area is gated. So once we're in the butts, be it a one-on-one -on -one lesson, you know, a two, three person flush, or maybe even, you know, groups of people, and we're double gunning, you've got shooters and loaders and so on. We can then close the gate, keep this area safe. And indeed, no one then is stood in the fallout zone um, where actually it's the clays sometimes landing as opposed to shot landing, which would normally relate to fallout. Um, I think we ought to run through a little bit of shooting and just show really how exciting um, this format is. I'm gonna load up and take a few. Let's have a look. Let's uh, break down, um, clear, the details, technique related to uh, shooting the simulated grouse. Now, a lot of it's generic. It's just, uh, it's just a little bit more emphasis here and there, okay? So these are in effect incoming targets or crossing targets. The one key thing really is this end and how we stand with the gun. Now, we all know that we've got to have weight forward. You know, you've heard the term nose over toes. I use it quite often about keeping that, that body weight sort of 60% forward, say, on the front foot. That being one o'clock if you're right-handed or indeed 11 o'clock, roughly speaking, if you're left-handed. I would say in this instance, it's just a little bit more exaggerated. Call it 70% if you want. Um, we're forward, we're low, we're ready. You know, it's a real sharp sort of almost sniper-like stance, you know, ready for action. Now, 
it's imperative at that point that the eyes are rolling straight over the end of the muzzle but that the muzzle is on your horizon line now that's going to that's going to be totally different depending on location i said earlier our topography rising up then with a tree lined backdrop bracken undulating going up and then the pine forest at the back so our horizon line here and jack will show you this later is where the bracken almost meets the trees so our muzzle is on that line stock where it should be side of chest with your standard gun down and the eye looking across the muzzle into the distance ready to react the idea then again as i said earlier because the targets are quite sharp the motion is pretty much immediate as soon as one sees the clay it's that clean mount on okay and it's got to be firm there's nothing light here there's no sort of slightly dribbling it into the cheek guns loose muzzles a bit loose you're going to get muzzle flip you're going to shoot high you're going to miss over the top so if ever it had to be sharp and i remember saying that actually on the rabbit target this is not dissimilar it's low it's tight it's focused and it's that confident mount straight onto the target okay the incoming targets <clears throat> uh, we haven't got anything dead straight obviously with that you'd pretty much put the muzzle on pull the trigger job done uh, ours are in effect just slightly quartering either side of the butt again to best replicate the birds and actually with a bit of safety in mind um, because at the height that some of them are they'd hit you straight in the face and that wouldn't be particularly good for business for me I would probably use a very subtle version of pull away uh, the pull away on these forward slightly quartering targets is minimal um, we don't measure lead we know that but in my mind I'm not even pulling away eight inches it's minimal it's almost uh, very sharp and early on off bang okay and the key with that is that weight forward and that really tight positive mount into the cheek uh, so that relates to anything coming left and right and the different variants of but from a forward position okay so they're in effect driven with a, a minimal quarter the crosser here well that's a bit different that then of course allows all three styles depending on you know how early you pick it up um, it's coming across it sometimes catches the wind it will flutter a little but it's basically powering out and dropping down we've tried our best to get it to sort of match the landscape again you know trying to replicate that bird in flight swing through yes you could um, probably have to be quite sharp but you could do that uh, maintained don't know again probably have to be pretty quick on that but the perfect one it seems for this is the pull away just buys a bit of time quite smooth and just allows that you know sort of idea of keeping the mind calm i seem to for anybody who's watched the videos i i i, I almost might come across as an advocate a fan of pull away i'm not uh, i always used to shoot swing through but uh, in my later years i've just seen it as a nice subtle uh, approach style but I don't want to be unfair because that's my opinion and uh, you know for what that's worth we're all very different but the crosser as any crossing target I think allows you know all those styles and 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 the sort of hybrid you know sort of um, maintained and then pulling the lead away a bit you know those little sort of personalized ones it's an open game on the crosser I think the key one here is the stuff coming towards you like I said earlier just flitting left and right that is sharp on and off there's no swing through possibly you could maintain you know if you start to get used to the sequence or the the, the feel and something comes out and you're a fraction later in front move shoot yes yes you could that's totally feasible um, we've covered safety um, I've told you about the setup I think that would be fairly generic if if someone was simulating 
uh, grouse because you want the birds to fly over or to the side and beyond the butt. So you definitely wouldn't want anybody, you know, spectators, family, friends, they want to be in a safe zone or they want to be right here, you know, in the action with you. Um, guns, well, you can fill your boots. You can shoot a 410 here with a nice 18, 19 gram load. Small bore, 28, 20, 12, of course, anything will do it. Whatever, whatever your bag is. Um, it depends if you're using this for practice in the field. Well, then, of course, you're going to use the tool that you're going to take with you. But if indeed you're using this as just fun or just practice, general practice, um, you know, then it's, a, it's an open bag. Some people prefer side-by-sides on grouse. You know, back in the day, that would have been the only choice. And I guess there is something lovely about that barrel orientation side by side, certainly for the crossing birds, that lovely traditional feel, you know, just playing really. Um, moving on to double gunning training. Um, this is a great, a great sort of format for practicing loading. So whereas the shooters getting their kicks for the real thing or just for general practice, it's also a brilliant one for double gunning. And here at Hound Hall, we do courses for loading. Um, so it gives that, uh, you know, it gives that feel, that excitement, that sort of rush, um, you know, of taking the gun safely with a safety on, reloading safely, bringing the gun back up, you know, and working with said shooter. So that's really good practice as well. Your space is limited to a degree. Um, you know, it is the best sort of alternative example of for that training. Um, I've talked about uh, stance and technique. Grouse shooting, not for everybody. I know that. And, you know, let's be blunt, it's really expensive. Um, some people think it's very elitist uh, or it's just for, you know, kings and queens and well-heeled people. Well, the sad fact if you like or the just the fact is that it's a very very expensive uh, uh, sort of conservation trip to manage okay there's a huge amount of positive work that's done in maintaining moorland um, and highland um, for associated um, you know species and fauna um, the, the work is vast and wide. I mean, Google it, look at it. I mean, there's people that are utterly dedicated and have been for years and years. And, 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 and the, the, the expanses of ground are vast. Um, that comes at a price. And it's all year round. I mean, it's non-stop, you know, it's, it's fully committed. Your end product is a wonderful thing, but the, you know, the cost is, is relative. So yes, it is an expensive game, but it's only relative to the work and the input that's carried out in those down months behind the scenes that most people will never see and may not even know about. Um, I don't want to get involved here in, uh, you know, debates and politics. Um, this shows about fun and enjoyment and feel and, you know, sort of celebrating the wonder of shotgun shooting. Um, but shooting birds is not for everybody. Uh, that's what makes this a great second. Clays, the, the romance of the, you know, reenacting what one would do out on a, you know, on a moor, um, but just using the format of clay targets. Um, so this is a great one for vegetarians or, or, or meat eaters that don't like shooting birds. You know, it's for everybody. Um, and that's, you know, one of the things that makes it so very accessible. Um, I hope as ever, we've, you know, given you an insight, uh, an understanding of, um, I could probably witcher on about lots of other bits and pieces, but uh, I might end up digressing there. As ever, put your comments underneath or any questions. Um, I will do my best to answer. I don't really want to get involved in, um, you know, people who are pro and people who are against, um, you know what, everybody to their own. Um, it's a big world and there's lots of us. Um, you know, the key would be to try and find a harmony. The only downside, um, 
you know, with working against uh, things like grouse shooting. It's quite old school in its setup. Uh, it's in sort of remote locations. You've got that infrastructure of people, families that have gone back generations. You know, this business is historic. It's not some new thing that's popped up that someone's trying to make coin from. You know, it's been set for hundreds of years. Um, and so it's a shame that those people that are reliant on this annual income, um, people coming in, staying in the area, using the infrastructure, shooting, you know, the, the byproduct of that going out to restaurants and so on. You know, it, 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 I wouldn't have said it's huge business, I'd said it was lifestyle um, and it looks after a lot of people. Um, but as I say, it's not for everyone and I totally get that. But I hope today has given an insight into this type of shooting generally. And remember that uh, all that aside, from a fun angle, this is clay shooting. Um, it can be corporate. Uh, it can be lessons, as you know. It can be loading practice. Um, and above all else, if you've never done it before, I suggest you come and give it a try because it's bloody good fun. And uh, like most of us when we were younger, playing soldiers and hiding and shooting, um, even just walking into this structure, um, you know, sort of almost brings the slight child out in me. Um, it's sort of fun. So um, anyway, do you know what? Grouse butts, hound hall shooting, targets. Hope you've enjoyed it. I will see you on the next episode. Oh, and I dedicate this little video to David and Danny.